Another fine day this be, the storm finally broke last night, and now the seas are as calm. And Bonnie said there be a treasure that no man could find. How e'er as women, may we able to find it in plain sight. Off to Ireland it was then. I put me hair up in me black hat to not be recognized as a woman, and me breeches on. I kept me small sword in me coat for safety purposes. Me shirt was tied in front with a vest, so I could pass as a man once again. I of course had heard about the Dagda's cauldron from the stories the lads used to say o'er a pint or two at the pub and on the ship with a few drops of rum. A cauldron that was endless in supply. Food, or what I wanted most of all, a child to call me own. To fall in love again was impossible since me husband passed away, and I had to pretend to be a man once again. Calico Jack asked me to join his crew, and I didn't hesitate to join. But once again, I fell hard for one of me crewmates. It was a surprise to him once he saw what I had to offer. I was in the head taking a break, when he happened to come crashing in to find out the truth. He was quick to woo me with rum and a few pints. He always knew how to make me laugh. His crooked nose and light hair was such a contrast to me. I couldn't help but to like him right away. Me love was so happy that we talked about having a child to call our own. I didn't have the heart to tell him I couldn't bear a child. It was me fate. He didn't want to hear a word of it. The cauldron was a myth. He had heard so many stories and after he almost died on me, I could not bear another loss. I had no choice but to find this cauldron. As soon as we docked, I told the crew not to wait up for me as I went on my way. There I saw a crone sitting by herself stirring in what looked like a black huge pot with a stew that smelled delicious. What ye got there, me lady? I asked with a gold coin in me purse. What ye most desire, a child? The lady with greasy black hair with white streaks over one good eye. Her other eye I think was made of glass, as I could see me reflection in it. How this woman knew what I most desired, was beside me. Mayhaps she knew the stories that were told. Mayhaps she had heard of me. I knew that Landlubber wrote some stories that were not to be true. How e'er I ne'er told no one about me fate. All except me first husband and now my new lover. Did he talk? If so, I'd got him cold. I know not of where you got that knowledge from, me lady, but tis true. How does this kettle solve me problems then, eh? I was leery of this lady I didn't know from Adam. I, Bonnie told me ye were coming, either you want the stew or not. How e'er be in the knowledge that with every you make a choice, another one be made for ye. What if I tell ye, I would rather have the pot instead. I was not ashamed of what I wanted, what I truly needed. If ye are sure, then I can give the pot to ye, but the stew needs to be eaten first, and this pot never depletes itself. Ye need to eat all the stew before ye can have the pot. The pot ne'er depletes? Not air? I was curious now. I. I ne'er lie. Ye need to make a choice and soon though, as I be on me merry way in an hour or so. This lady's voice sounded familiar somehow, like a voice I had heard many a time. Someone from me passed. Perhaps reminding me of choices that I shouldn't have made. Me mother lost her life to drinking. Me grandmother only knew me as a lad and not lady. I thought about me choices, and even though the stew smelled delicious. I could have a few bowls and then have the cauldron for meself. Then again, if the cauldron ne'er depletes, I'd be sick of that stew for a lifetime. I knew that I had to make the right choice. The older lady gave me a devious grin and a wink. I see ye have made your choice then. She gently nudged me on the shoulder. I have. I can live without the cauldron, but I wouldn't mind a bit of the stew ye have there instead. Mayhaps just a taste. I it be two shilling for thee. The bowl is made out of bread so you can eat it along with the stew. As soon as I handed her the coins, the stew wafted through me nose and through me soul. When I took the first spoonful in me mouth, the warmth and taste filled me nose. I ne'er did have anything as delicious and tasty. Now, be on your way, and be careful of what you wish for. The crone gave me a salacious wink, and when the gust of wind blew in front of me, the crone, the cauldron, and the stew disappeared. 
It was the strangest sight I ever did see in me life. I ne'er wanted to talk to even the men on the crew of what had transpired. Two weeks later, I got sick on the ship, which was unusual for me, but it turned out that I was with child. Fiction Idea from Dagda's Cauldron Irish Myth Historical fiction Mary Read the Famous Female Pirate